uh, in my opinion, the crisis was primarily created by government policies. Uh, specifically, the Federal Reserve printed too much money uh, under Greenspan where we had negative real interest rates for two years, and then Bernanke inverted interest rates, uh, at, which created terrible pressure on bank, bank margins. We couldn't have had a bubble in the economy if, if the Fed hadn't printed too much money. It ended up in the housing market because of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, these two giant government-sponsored enterprises. So it wasn't really the regulatory structure that that created the problems, it was government policy from the Fed and, and through Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. And what is irony is the perception that the banking industry was deregulated. In fact, the regulatory environment during the bubble uh, was the worst in my career. It was just misregulation. There's a huge amount of focus on Sarbanes-Oxley, a huge amount of focus on the Patriot Act, and, and no focus really on traditional risk management. So. Uh, uh, they, may, they contributed to the crisis more in an indirect way, but the real cause of, of the misallocations in the economic system came from the Fed, Federal Reserve and Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. I was very opposed to the TARP program. In fact, I wrote Congress and uh, tried very hard to keep TARP from happening. Unfortunately, however, once TARP <clears throat> was approved by Congress, there was uh, significant regulatory pressure placed on all the large financial institutions to participate in TARP, particularly on all the $100 billion and over banks. The pressure <coughs> was based on uh, Bernanke's study of the Great Depression, where um, Roosevelt tried to bail out individual uh, companies, and the market reacted when he did that. A at the time that TARP was instituted, there were three large financial institutions that were under stress, but Bernanke didn't want to bail those three out because it would be obvious he was helping, helping them. So he use regulatory, I mean intense regulatory pressure to encourage all the $100 billion and over institutions to participate. TARP was really a, uh, a negative for the healthy financial institutions. We didn't need the capital. <clears throat> we had to pay very high interest rate. Uh, they got warrants. And so it was really a subsidy for the unhealthy institutions at the expense of the healthy institutions. Uh, bb t was one of the first banks to pay back TARP. We paid it back as quickly uh, as we possibly could. All the large financial institutions, the $100 billion plus institutions, were basically strongly encouraged, effectively forced, to participate in TARP because the Federal Reserve didn't want the market to know that the specific institutions that were being bailed out, and by encouraging everybody, including the strong inst institutions, to participate, uh, they obscured the fact that certain institutions were being saved. Uh, if you didn't need the capital, the fact that you had to pay a very high interest rate and give warrants to the government was very expensive. Uh, in our case, that was several hundred million dollars, probably, uh, and it turned out when they did the stress test, we didn't, we really didn't need the capital uh, anyway. Uh, so I, I thought it was a, uh, a redistribution from the healthy institutions to the unhealthy institutions, and not good government policy. Although they had created such a panic, they may have needed to do something, but I don't think TARP was the answer. I think the long-term consequences are very negative. And the classic example is GMAC. GMAC is the automobile finance arm of General Motors. Uh, GMAC contributed a lot to the problem we have in the automobile business. In order to sell automobiles a number of years ago, they invented the 100% car loan payable over seven years. And what that meant is most people owed more on their car than it was worth after three or four years, so they can't go buy a new car. And now. And of course, GMAC got a lot of cars back uh, and, and had huge losses in that regard. And now the government keeps pouring money into GMAC, keeping them in business under the theory that there's no financing for automobiles, which is not true. People like us are in the car business. We just don't want, aren't going to do the dumb stuff that GMAC is doing. And you can't uh, misallocate capital, invest in things that shouldn't be done, and raise your standard of living in the long term. And, and that's what government policy uh, uh, is doing. So. Poorly run institutions need to fail, uh, and then that capital gets reallocated to better run institutions. That's the way markets work. You have to have a downside. And, and I do think that the healthy institutions have definitely been hurt, hurt badly, by keeping the unhealthy institutions in business because these unhealthy competitors are continuing to do things that drive down margins of profitability for the healthy institutions. You could see healthy institutions in trouble because of keeping the unhealthy in business.